everyone welcome back to the web pro podcast we are here today and we are katie and roxy hello good morning hope you are all well how are you roxy very very well this morning the sun is shining which always fills my soul with happiness it does make i don't know it just oh, it just makes me feel nice it's not here so if you could send a little bit of that my way i would be buzzing buzzing had a bit of a quiet weekend Needed a little bit of R and R, so took the day off yesterday. But yeah, good. Didn't really do a lot, but that's what my soul needed. I watched. You watched anything good on the TV? We've kind of come to the end of all of our shows at the minute. I started watching kind of NHS drama last night. I can't remember what it's called. Oh yeah, I can't think what it's called either. But I was going to watch it. Did you start it? Oh, I can't think what it's called. I was, I was always falling asleep. I was like, oh. Malpractice. That's Malpractice. What. I was like, something to do with not doing yeah, that. I started to watch that. It's made by the same people as Line of Duty and loved Line of Duty. So, and then we just had a chilled one, really. Chilled one. Kids were kind of not a lot. <laughs> but it felt weird. I'm not going to lie. I felt like I wanted to get my phone out and just do a little bit of work, but I needed to be strict with myself. And yeah. Yeah. No, it's not always easy to, to be strict. It's, it, it's always easier to pick the phone up and do the thing, but it's just about having that almost self-discipline. Yeah, for sure. Like, no good to anybody if we're burnt out. <laughs> We've got loads going on there, haven't we? And that's what it that's kind of what it, it is. Like yeah. tickets for wedge kind of going on sale on Friday. So if you have not got onto our wait list yet, you need to get on it. It's already oversubscribed. We are keeping the event really exclusive and small this year. So we have only got 40 tickets available. It's at the most gorgeous venue, the Old Kent Barn down in Kent. We're coming down to the south. We know that year after year, we get people travel all over the UK and we've held them in the kind of Midlands and North Midlands before. So this year we were like, Right, we're coming down, we're coming down south and we're travelling. <laughs> but we get people from all over the country come and come to Edcon, don't we? We do, we do. People travel from all corners of the UK to come to Edcon. We are so, so excited. Like I, I've been like telling everybody about it, people who, who want to listen, people who, who don't want to listen. But I, I love bringing wedding industry professionals together. And this year is going to be like, no other webcom we've done it's going to be absolutely amazing i'm so excited for the fact that we've got the most gorgeous venue i do i love i love it it's beautiful the old kent barn is stunning the link will be in the show notes if you want to get on our wait list to be one of the first to get your hands on tickets when they go on sale so visit the link in the show notes to register for that wait list now don't yeah, and I would definitely encourage, like, I can't tell you the amount of people that have been in my inbox, and I know you've had the same, Roxy, uh-huh. like, when, when the tickets go live, I really want to be there, like, how can I guarantee a ticket, get on the wait list, they're going to go on sale on Friday at 8am, tickets will go on sale, we'll send you an email with the link that you can go and book your ticket via, or the, and then they're going to open up for sale for everybody the following Monday which is like the first or second of May something like that (laughs) around that day so if if there are any available but that wait list is oversubscribed we normally hold Redcon for about 150 to 200 wedding professionals this year because we've got a a little bit of a different vision this year it's shaping up to be our best Redcon yet the tickets are more limited aren't they so there are only 40 tickets available and we know that people are primed I don't think there's been this much hype, actually. It's definitely shaping up to be the best ever that we've held. And if you've attended one of our previous events, you'll know that it really is the number one event for wedding professionals. If you are wanting to learn how to up-level your business, if you're wanting to make amazing connections inside of the wedding industry and be in front of some amazing coaches, speakers and trainers, then you are going to want to be at WedCon. It's held on the 15th of November. It's an all-day event, beautiful venue. Can't talk about how gorgeous this venue is. <laughs> no, get yourself on the wait list now. And that's what all we're going to say about that one. Yeah. But get, get on that wait list. Yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, 
I'm actually not looking forward to Friday afternoon because I've got a feeling we're going to have a few people drop, jumping in the box saying, I've not been able to get tickets, I've not been able to get tickets. Uh, yeah, we're obviously not going to know how it's going to go until the tickets go on sale. However, all of the right noises are happening. Our wait list is oversubscribed by two times over. And, you know, I've been getting emails over the weekend and people dropping into my inbox saying, hey, see, how do I get a ticket? Well, you need to get yourself on that wait list. <laughs> I've even had somebody in my inbox that was like, try to find the link for the tickets. And I was like, you're not going to find that link yet because they are not live. <laughs> <laughs> we're so excited i'm really looking forward to it and we've taken all your feedback on board as well we have some feedback every single year so this event we are bringing it the speaker lineup is amazing we've had a pick of amazing speakers yeah. and we're really lucky actually aren't we that we, we do get to like work with some amazing coaches and amazing speakers and we listen to you as well so like the stuff that you tell us that you need in your business to make a difference that's what we are bringing. Okay, keep an eye out for news. Go and register for the waitlist, and you will be the first to be able to get tickets at eight o'clock on Friday. Okay, let's talk pricing. <laughs> da, da, da. Let's jump in. <laughs> so pricing doesn't have to be as scary as it seems. It's one of those things in business that, you know, we all need to get ahead round to be successful. We're not here for the fun of it. We're here to make the money. So it's about how we can do that. Yeah, like we hear from so many wedding professionals time and time again that, you know, they're getting blocked with the sale constantly and it's kind of a race to the bottom. And, you know, I heard it I heard it last week, actually. I was chatting to, chatting to the stationer inside my inbox and she was saying, oh, inside the stationery industry at the minute, we're, we're having a problem because kind of a lot of hobbyist stationers are coming forward and they are undercutting everybody and it's kind of a race to the bottom. Now, we don't want you to be playing that game. So what you need to be doing is convincing couples of your value. And we're going to talk you through some really simple steps as how you can do that today. Because if people can't differentiate you, if your couples cannot differentiate you, then they are going to compare you on price. And then it is just a race to the bottom. If they've not made any connection with you, if you've got no point of difference, and, you know, all they're asking is for your price. And, and if you answer that question and, and just give them your price, then there's no connecting factor there. And, you know, you're not convincing your couples of your value at all. And then you just go into the part where you're the same as everybody else and couples will just pick the cheapest if there's no other way to differentiate you. That's it. And I think, you know, it's the typical bride asked about the price and packages that you offer before actually anything else and even way before they understand the value and the expertise that you can bring. So it's just about getting that across to them. And we're going to yeah, for you. sure. I think, you know, as wedding professionals, we often think, you know, we know the stories that of couples of brides of grooms that have been burnt by like hiring that cheap photographer that's then not turned up on their wedding day or you know not receiving a professional service and then them having huge regrets after the wedding about not hiring somebody professional and I think as wedding professionals we kind of think that that's just a given that couples are going to know that and it's a no-brainer that they should know that hiring professionals are going to get Mm -hmm. a better service or they're going to get everything right but it's not and it's not a no-brainer it's all about how we educate our couples and how we take them through that kind of journey so that they realize your value above everybody else's I think a little bit of the problem is we should all stop looking at this from the eyes of a business owner and look at it from the eyes of the couples that you are dealing with yeah for sure like People are fixated on price. And I'm sure you, inside your own personal life, can be quite fixated on price. Like, you know, it's all we hear about in the news right now. The cost of living is going up, petrol prices going up, food prices going up, et cetera, et cetera. And it's quite often talk, talked about in negative ways. So your couples are, like, psychologically predisposed to want to weigh up whether they're going to get a good deal from you before they hand over any cash. But you are able to turn that around and, and turn these price shoppers into profit with the right strategies in your back pocket. Like these couples are looking for your service. They've contacted you for further information 
and they're awaiting your reply. Like they're going to hire somebody. All we need to do as wedding professionals is ensure that that person is you. All you've got to do is answer their pricing question in the right way. And that's going to lead to a booking. Answer it in the wrong way and you're going to lose them. And, you know, you spend hundreds, hundreds of pounds on advertising or hours of your own time marketing your business for another prospect to contact you. Yeah, that's right. So like you've already got that person in your inbox. You might as well convert this sale in the right way. And when you understand how to market to like price shoppers, couples immediately understand why you are worth your price. And then you stand out from your competitors as well. And then booking the wedding becomes easy. And when you don't, you just keep getting those same results. You fight to get couples to realize the value that you bring and and they probably aren't going to get it. And then you're undercut at the last minute by somebody cheaper. And we've all been there and it's really frustrating. It does. It sucks, right? Yeah. Now, the first thing I tell any wedding professional, when this kind of price question comes up and they say to me, oh, Casey, my couples are only interested in price. They're only interested in price. Is the first thing we need to do as wedding professionals is remove that emotion from that. Like price isn't personal. Like when you receive an inquiry asking about your prices, your couple is actually starting a conversation with you about value. It doesn't mean that all they care about is the price. So firstly, stop taking it personally. The price question isn't personal at all. It's just the only question and the first question they know how to ask. You know, they're not educated inside the world of, you know, booking a wedding yet, booking your service. So the first way they know how to start a conversation with you is to ask about price and and to gauge whether you're the right supplier for them. So it's not the time for you to start defending your pricing. It's not the time for you to get on the defensive about why you cost what you do. It's definitely not the time to start being offended and just and like justify your pricing. Your couple is signaling to you that they like what they've seen so far on Instagram or wherever they found you. And they want to know more about you so that they can decide whether you're right for them and their wedding. So the next time you feel stung by this price question, reframe it and hear it like this. I like what I've seen and read about you so far. Can you tell me more? And you'll just come at it with a whole different, better spin. At at the end of the day, they have contacted you. They have reached out to you. And exactly what Katie was just saying, you've got to get rid of that emotional connection. Only because they're asking about the price, it actually means, hello, I am interested. Tell me more. But it's the way you answer that's important. And the way that you answer this in the right way is by explaining the value that you offer to them. What problems are you going to solve? When explaining your value to potential clients, you've got to go beyond simply starting with what you offer and instead focus on the benefits that they will receive receiving by booking you. Do not just ping over prices and then be done. That's going to close down the conversation and that is not what we want. So, for example, if you're a wedding planner, you could explain how your expertise and experience can save couples time, stress and money. And I think touch pointing on that the money thing is just as good as answering the question, how much do you charge? Because couples are making an investment and they want to make sure that they're getting that value for money. Sure, like you can um, explain your value by detailing how you've got respect relationships with vendors already in place, how you're going to handle all of the stresses and the little issues that are going to come up on the wedding day so the couple can fully enjoy their day. But there's loads of different ways that you can kind of reframe what you do and have a look at actually what is the service I'm offering? Actually, what are the benefits of these services? And that, that should be coming across in your marketing, but quite often it's not coming across in the sales conversations and in the email responses or however your clients are inquiring with you, whether it's face-to-face at a wedding fair, whether it's you know in person or online, it's being lost in this part. So have a think about how you can you know showcase you know, your expertise, your experience, the value you bring, instead of just focusing on being the cheapest out there, because nobody wants to be the cheapest at all. So as a photographer, you can showcase your skill and creativity, you can highlight how you can capture those candid intimate moments, how you can tell the couple's love story through your work, whatever it is that 
you do, you can explain how you're going to put them at ease, uh, making them feel comfortable, for example, and other wedding professionals can demonstrate their values in other ways too. Like a florist can talk about how they can create unique and beautiful floral arrangements that are going to perfectly complement the couple's style and vision. A musician could highlight their talent for reading the room, keeping the party going, etc. There's so much that you bring to the table aside from whatever it is that you do, aside from just being a wedding florist or just being a wedding planner. And you just need to focus on that unique value you bring and get your couples to realise that in your communication too. Yeah, I think for many wedding professionals competing, competing against prize shoppers can be a frustrating and challenging experience. And it's common for engaged couples to inquire about rates and prices before fully understanding the value and expertise that a venue can offer. And that's because they don't know any other way to ask that question. Again, it's just how you give that reply. However, in the wedding industry, value is so much more about just the number on a price tag. By, and by moving the focus away from the price and more towards the unique value that you bring in the ways that Katie's just explained, you can effectively communicate your worth to potential clients and stand out in a crowded market. And that's what we want. Yeah, for sure. That is, that is what you want. Like, it's never about price. And like we've been talking about this in, with the clients that are going to be coming on to our Wedding Pro CEO program with us. And we're going to be working with, I'm so excited about this, Roxy, I'm so excited. I feel like we're going to invest so much time into these people. They're going to become like our little protégés and, like mm-hmm. our, and almost like our children. Yes. But the wedding professionals that are going to be working with us over the next six months, a few of them we've been talking and we've been having sales conversations. Yes, we have sales conversations too. People talk to us about price too. Believe it or not. We also have to explain our value too. That like we practice what we preach. But what we've been saying, look, it's never about price. So a couple of people have like mentioned about, you know, what's going on in the industry right now and we're kind of heading back into a new normal a new new normal again who mm-hmm. thought we'd forgotten all about that but <laughs> we can't treat this year's weddings like last like last year or the year before we've like had last crazy, year. yeah we've had like a crazy period where we've still been like rebooking weddings from years ago that were like postponed or cancelled we were really busy off the back of that then we had all the couples who decided to postpone their weddings because of covid that were kind of getting married last year start of this year and that's all kind of calmed down now and now we're looking for kind of weddings bookings for kind of 2024 2025 2026 and you know the wedding industry is a little slower compared to last year compared to the year before But when we compare it on comparison with kind of like 2019, which would be the next kind of actual viable comparison over the last sort of however many years, it's actually not that far away from where we were in 2019. The last few years have been crazy. We need to give ourselves a break. Yes, there's a lot of that in the news right now about cost of living, but all the evidence is showing that couples are spending, they are booking. Yes, they might be having longer engagements, but they're spending more on the weddings in order to have amazing experiences and amazing days. But your price is never the problem. And this is what we've been saying to the people in our conversations this week. A couple of them have been telling us, you know, I've dropped my prices and I'm still not making bookings. And we know why they're not making bookings. It's because they've not explained their value and it's not about the price. So these people, we're definitely going to get rid of that, aren't we? Oh, we're gonna gosh. Go, <laughs> we're going to get those prices back up to where they were before and probably even higher as well. Mm-hmm. But it's never about the price. And that's absolutely evident in the conversations we had. I know you had a conversation this morning with somebody that's just done exactly the same. Yep. They've dropped their prices. They're still not making bookings. And that's just because they're not explaining that value. When you can explain your value, you stop dealing with price shoppers straight away. You communicate that value and then you become the only choice to that client. And it's just about how you communicate that effectively. So there are six steps that you kind of need to get right to be able to kind of implement this process inside your business and it does take some practice what I would recommend is for you to kind of write it out for you what this what this process looks like for you and then each and every time you deal with an inquiry that comes into your business you go back to this document so that you can kind of look through look through as to how 
How do I answer that question again? Oh yeah, that's what I need to do. It's just a little six step cheat sheet that exactly like you've said, it's gonna be great to have, if you can have this handy. And then once you get into that pattern of replying in the new way, then bookings are gonna be coming. Yeah, like using these steps, like makes it super simple to convert those couples who you think are price shoppers into clients happy to pay your prices and who value your service as well. Because it's not just about the value you bring to your clients, but it's about them valuing you as a business mm-hmm. as well and valuing your work and respecting your boundaries and you know being perfect clients for you to be able to work with. Okay, so the first thing that you want to be starting to do is injecting some personal detail into your response to the couples to help kickstart the relationship with them and build that conversation up so that they begin to like you and therefore want to do business with you. You can include some extra personal details that can also build a sense of authority as well. If you've worked at their venue before or know the wedding planning team there, you automatically position yourself as a trusted supplier because that kind of ticks the box of, okay, this person has worked at where we're getting married, so therefore they must know what they're doing, which obviously we know you do. Yeah, so in this phase, it's going to take some research. However, it's it really works, and I would encourage you not to remove this. I'm, I'm actually going into we'll go into this process in much, much, much more detail inside of our wedding post the EO program. And I was actually writing training for this element this morning. And I was I was talking in there about about how we infuse psychology into this and, and why this works. But one of the examples I was thinking about this morning was when we were in the bridal shop, it was about being able to build connections with people really quickly and straight away. So we would quite often talk about finding common ground, whether it be talking about having young children and planning or planning a wedding, exactly like you said, at the venue, perhaps you've been to a wedding at the venue before, or you've worked at that venue before. We would quite often talk about our own wedding planning experience, wouldn't we, Roxy, in order to build up, break down those barriers and get people to start that likability factor. And then if you can bring in a sense of authority as well, such as, you know, I've worked with this venue before, you know, or yeah, yeah, I know so-and-so on the wedding planning team. She's amazing. We've worked with her a few times or, you know, I really love the catering that they do at that venue, whatever it is. Yes, you're going to need to do a little bit of research, look at the look at the clues that the couple have already given you like quite often in an inquiry like they might give some clues and if they don't ask for them so don't go back in straight with the price like ask for some more information ask questions ask where they're getting married so that then you can create find some common ground and create some like person like some personal relationship there start building that relationship yeah I was just gonna say it's there's kind of, it's like a two-pronged attack. This is because you've got to do the research. You know, in the bridal shop, we would look at local venues. You know, even we spent, I'd spend two hours in a changing room with a bride. And, you know, it's really important that you build that report in that time. And it's it's a great actual time to do it. But by listening, by understanding what they're saying and doing the research so you, you can respond in the right way, literally sets you kind of as an expert in that field. And I used to love it, actually. If you are, you know, we all love the wedding industry. So just spending 10 minutes every now and again, every couple of days, doing a little bit of research, taking notes on venues, if they've got any offers going on, local suppliers that you work with. It all just kind of builds that authority around you. Yeah, for sure. So the next thing that you want to be kind of layering your response with is something we've been banging on about mm-hmm. inside this industry, I thought it was for about six years, but it's definitely been for the past part of 10, I would say, is giving out free information. And the reason why is is because it works. And it works so well in positioning you as a figure of authority to couples who know nothing about you yet. Plus, it taps into that favour principle. If If you give the couple valuable information that they can use to plan their wedding, or it helps them with a task, or it helps them with a problem that they might be facing right now. They'll have first-hand experience of why you are worth your price and they'll feel more obligated to book you as well because they feel they've received something from you. So they they will, it kicks in that kind of favour principle where they will at least hear you out 
because they kind of feel like, oh, I've had something from you. I owe you something now too. And we'd use this inside the bridal shop as well, wouldn't we? Yeah, definitely, yeah. We used to give out jewellery at the beginning of appointments, which worked really, really well. It's that that's a feeling of, okay, so they've given me something, so I need to give them something back in return. Doing this actually is a sure fired way actually to set yourself up as that expert, but also build that report up, rapport. How how great are, are your couples going to feel, you know, if you're giving them that information that's going to stop them having to hunt for something or go to somebody else for it? If you can give it all to them, then we're like, oh, my life, this this supply is great. So helpful. Yeah. And what I would say in this is that this isn't to be used like to be sleazy, to be salesy and in a disingenuous way at all. Um, it's, it's about actually caring about the clients you want to work with genuinely wanting to support them genuinely wanting to make a difference to their wedding genuinely want to bring them an amazing service and yes that results in a sale because we are a business so you know um whether you implement the favor principle with information that you give to people and you make you're very generous with information and advice or you know or maybe it's your access to your supplier list or whatever it is that needs to come from a place of genuinely wanting to help that bride rather than oh I want to sell sell you something so I'm going to give you this so that then you're going to buy me because it's never going to work you're going to get crap reviews people aren't going to want to work with you it's disingenuous they're not going to connect with you and it's not going to work anyway they're not going to be your ideal clients at the end of the day it needs to come from a place of genuinely wanting to help your couples and the vast majority of you will be listening to this and will fit into that camp anyway yeah so the next way that you can respond to those prize shoppers is by sharing client testimonials couples are relying on these nowadays more than ever and the average couple reads about 18 testimonials in the research phase before they even talk to the photographer they're weighing up 18 testimonials it's, like it's even more than that for venues it's like i think oh, i shared an instagram post about this the last week so go and hunt that out but it's even more for venues, but like testimonials are providing social proof for your, for you as a venue, but it's providing evidence of how valuable your service is from other people exactly like them. And they're more likely to trust your testimonials and your reviews of couples exactly like them, especially if you can give testimonials or galleries of examples of weddings that were held at the venue that they're going to get married at yeah this is all about building that social that so social proof and if you're one of those suppliers that sat there thinking oh maybe my process for gathering testimonials could be better get on it because this is this is the way to build that social proof that is so so important yeah so also you want to be directing your inquiries to blogs or images of your work this works especially well if you can direct them to blogs or images and examples of your work at their venue or in their wedding style that they've already communicated to you in your research phase because it demonstrates that you are listening and you understand their vision and that then builds trust because they feel like you're an authority to be trusted and valued especially if you're using like I said it works especially well if you can kind of link it to a venue link it to their venue or link it to an example of a style that they're getting married at they then think yeah you get you absolutely get my vision for my wedding and they don't need to explain it anymore they feel held they feel appreciated they feel like you're gonna just you know run with their vision and make it absolutely amazing if you do this one right like they quickly are unable to imagine working with anybody else but you it's one of those things where it's like yeah that might be my person it's a really, really, really great one to do. And if you just plan it in advance a little bit, it's very, very easy to do. So the next thing that you can do is quite an easy one, actually, is add a photo to your email signature response. We are drawn to human faces and including a smiley photo of yourself sets you apart from the competitors. We've got a smiley photo of us in our email, email signature, haven't we? It just takes a little bit of research to learn how to do it. But it's, it's a surefire way to make that connection with your potential new couples. 
we're not talking like a cheesy, low quality photograph that you've taken on your last, last night out. Hire a professional and get some nice branded shoots done that you can then use not only on your email signature, actually, but across the board with your business. Yeah, like using a bad photo absolutely works against you. So I don't want anything like no selfies, nothing like you said, nothing on a night out, even just getting a picture of you on your at your next wedding you know spend spend some time just grab grab somebody else grab another supplier and say oh do you mind just taking a couple of couple of shots I need them for my email signature think professional smile and then pop it into email responses as well like a smiley exactly that people are drawn to smiles drawn to human faces and also you build trust like nothing else when you show up for your business okay the last one that we're going to go through today is Call to action. Gosh, we haven't said that word for a while. That's good. We love a call to action. So this is where you're going to tell your email responses, whichever way people are getting in touch with you, what step you want them to take next. By like activating all the other things above, they'll be influenced to check this out anyway. So the more specific you are with what your call to action is, the better your results will be. So instead of just suggesting that they book in for a call, Give them a link to your calendar or instead of, you know, getting them to check out such and such a page on your website, include the link in there, then include a link to book. It's going to cut out those back and forth emails and, and increase your results by more than a third too by doing it this way. Yeah, the thing okay. talk- Today, we've talked you through just a few ways in which you can start to communicate the value that you bring to couples without just going in price heavy, racing to the bottom all of the time. Quite often, like we said, you need to remove yourself from thinking that the price question is just that the couples are only interested in price and that they're, you know, on the lower end of the spectrum. Everybody's got a budget, even weddings that are 100 grand, 200 grand, 300 grand, they're still working towards the budget. So get it out of your head that these are just price shoppers. You know, it's all about then how you can use these layers that we've talked about today in order to build up that value with your clients as well. That's it. So the next time that you get an inquiry with that, with that question, how much are you? Reframe it and remember, hear it as, I like what I've seen. And I like what I've read about you so far. Can you tell me more and answer it in a more specific way? Yeah. So inside our Wedding Pro CEO group program, we go into this method in so much more detail, teaching you along along the way, not only this process and all the psychology that goes with it, but we also talk you through a sales strategy to ensure that you can confidently take all of your wedding clients from look to book. It's for all wedding professionals, whether you're a celebrant, florist, DJ, whether you've been in business for a long time or a short time, if you're looking to have a booked out wedding business, joining now also gives you access to our six figure success strategy where we teach you all the steps you need to go from wherever you are now, right the way up to six figures and beyond in your business and reach that next level for you. Alongside all of this, you also get an amazing six months of support from myself and Roxy in tailored group coaching calls where you can get every question inside of your business answered. You receive lifetime access to all of our modules that will take you to a booked out wedding CEO too. And you also get the option to book turbo calls with us because we don't want to leave anybody stuck forever. This isn't a membership. This isn't something that we're just whacking a video in just to kind of give you something this month. We've structured out this program to take you to a booked out wedding professional, concentrating on key areas inside of your business that are going to make the difference right now to you inside your business. Not only do you get those key areas that are going to have modules and training inside, you get the calls and you also get a six figure success strategy too. So if you want any information on whether this is right for you, you can fill out a no obligation form below. We'll get that inside the show notes and then we can be in touch and we can arrange a call or just backwards and forwards inside of our emails as well, just to see whether this is right for you. We've got amazing things planned for the people that are going to be working with us across six weeks. And we've got some amazing businesses inside. I'm so excited at the variety. Everybody's really positive. We 
don't include anybody we don't want to work with do we Roxy so the nope. businesses inside are absolutely amazing and we can't get we can't wait to start working with them and and actually what's so what's so great about group coaching is that you get that insight from everybody so you, you get the support from other people who are also going through similar things or have been through similar things you get that kind of experience and expertise not only from like me me and you Roxy but we you know everybody's got things to, to bring everybody's got stories to tell and you know inside our own group coaching program we pay thousands and thousands of pounds for coaching ourselves don't we yeah. <laughs> quite often it's the support group yes it's our coach who's amazing but also it's actually the support like system and being able to just quickly ask a question I had a question this morning and I was like hey guys like I'm just looking for such and such and you know people are more than happy to just kind of step in and help so we want to we want to get you to get you to where you want to be whether that is six figures whether that is beyond six figures get you to what a booked up wedding business looks like for you and we will pop the details inside of the show notes so that you can inquire if this sounds like for you yeah, we would love to have a chat and see whether this is a great fit or not. So do get in touch. Thank you so much for listening today. Let us know what you think about our podcast. You can do that by tagging us on Instagram. And also, if you are loving it, do leave us a review. We we bring this podcast out for you to help you in your wedding business. So if you're loving it, let us know. Leave us a lovely review. Yeah, and let us know as well if you're implementing these six strategies into your sales process and what difference that makes to you battling those price shoppers. So yeah, let us know. You can find us over on Instagram at The Wedding Business Hub or hop into our group too. Enjoy the rest of your day, lovely people. Hope the weather is much better by you than it is by me. I feel like for the next podcast, we need to record from Roxy's house because she gets all the nice sunny weather sun is shining have a lovely day and we will see you on the next episode bye